On one of my jam nights, I heard somebody say, oh, yeah, that player's amazing. He plays loads and he plays really fast and, uh, you know, it's sort of blistering pace and all this. And I thought, OK, yeah, that's OK. But it's only good if you attend to other musical aspects. Now, if you go and look on the ABRSM website, Associated Board of the Royal Schools of Music, the all the pieces are examined under what's called criteria. So you have a set of criteria and then the marks allotted depending on how good each thing is and you sort of balance it out and uh, arrive at a mark. And it's very important. It's not just the marking of this. This is real world musical sort of exploration and musical evaluation. Now, you have five things. There's pitch, time, tone, shape, performance five different things. And I'm going to explain what those things are. Most people would think that music is good if the first two are met. So pitch, is it in tune or are the notes right? Time, is it rhythmic? Is it even? Because if you've got those two things right, lots of people think, oh yeah, it's amazing. There's more to it. There is more to it than that. So the third one is tone. So pitch and time, I think, is fairly obvious. Are the notes right? If you're a violinist, are they in tune? Or, a, you know, any other instrument. You know, if you're a brass player, are they in tune? All that sort of thing. And then you've got time, which is, is the rhythm right? Is it, does it have a pulse? Does it sort of, does it move along nicely? It depends, of course, on the tempo. It could be something that is very flexible and fluid and quite slow as tempo. But is the intent still there? Because it should always be there. So tone is the third one. Tone. What does that mean? Well, if you're an electric guitarist, the tone is all in your fingers and uh, your picking hand. What you do with the guitar or the amplifier is kind of up to you. It's all in the fingers. And so for a flautist, for example, it's getting the embouchure right so you get a nice full tone instead of a breathy sort of mess. Uh, for a violinist, it's whether the bow is in the right place. If it's too close to the bridge, it sounds really thin and it can sound a bit woolly if your bow is over the fingerboard. So some sort of medium is a good idea. So you have a tonal control. If you listen to a guitarist, for example, any musician who is playing only a few notes. So, you know, you've the person that said, oh, it's amazing this person's playing all these, ah, it's really fast playing. If they play slowly, is it still good? Well, yes, of course it is. If other criteria are met, is the tone good? You know, if you play a couple of notes, but the tone is a bit ragged, it suddenly takes all the sting out of it. So the tone has to be as full as possible and as sensitive as possible to the style of music that you're playing. Whether it be Palestrina or Motorhead, it's the same idea. You can assess tunes by those two composers. Composer, Motorhead, the composer. Yeah, or Geezer, if you're referring to uh, Palestrina. Is the tone appropriate for that? Well, Palestrina lived... 450 years ago 500 years ago so we can't dig it up and dig him up and ask him but there are people who know about these things and are experts on how you know it's like being a historian and having artists impressions of things but frankly if you impart good tone then that's it you've you kind of nailed it now the next one along is shape what does shape mean? Well, it means things like dynamic contrast, you know, volumes. At the moment, I'm speaking with a variety of, of pitches and, and volume and also varying the tempo so that at the ends of phrases, things slow down a bit. And then they resume. So my f new phrase. And in music, we talk about phrasing and we talk about colour and shape. Now, that could be, as I said, dynamic contrast, and it could also be subtle sp uh, speed variations. So if you're playing a piece of romantic music, for example, there might be lots of rubato. So you vary the tempo, and but this is all subtle, of course. You vary the tempo according to the sort of the thing you're trying to say. So printed music, for example, can 
only give you well it can give you pitch and uh, and the, the rhythm and to a certain extent the volume level but everything else is kind of up to you and dictated slightly by things like Italian terminology or metronome mark or something like that but the rest really is up to you it's how you interpret things so in this magical world of YouTube you can listen to three different performances of a Chopin mazurka for example and then decide which one you like um, and impart your own flavor on it for example now the last one performance you think well what's that mean that, that's quite a broad term but really what it means is how you communicate your ideas and your version of a piece of music to the listener and really it's taking those four previous things you've got your pitch time tone shape and pitch time tone and shape and you are communicating those things you're packaging it up and giving it to somebody so it's whether you communicate all that stuff effectively it's whether you have like a vivid sort of um and and compelling performance if somebody's listening to something and they're just listening intently and watching closely the chances are that the performer is delivering all of those things in a nice package and it also encompasses what happens if things go wrong. For example, if you play a wrong note or a, maybe a wrong rhythm. So if you play a wrong note, how are you going to get back on track? Or if you play a rhythm that's slightly off, how are you going to make that pulse stay where it is? So those are musical skills. And it happens all the time. Nobody ever plays something absolutely perfectly. There are going to be little moments where you think, oh, no, uh, but it's how you get out of those things. It's how you make those things work for you. So although these five criteria, which are hugely important, appear on a website that who's most of whom uh, the exams being sort of classical music, there is nothing different to assessing a piece of rock music or soul or jazz. Mind you, they do jazz exams as well, the ABRSM, but it's music wide it doesn't really make any difference at all what music you're listening to so when you play something on a recording for example and then you listen back to it listen back with those five things in mind does the performance of your own material you've just recorded a guitar take on a logic or whatever play it back do those five things those five criteria are they met because if they are met then the chances are that's good music. It doesn't matter whether it's lots and lots of notes or blisteringly fast or blisteringly loud. It doesn't matter. It has to encompass all of those five things in order that it's a good piece of music.